Hey guys, welcome to this first uh, technical lecture on the series of lectures dealing with mathematical techniques in materials research. Now, I hope that uh, you have spent some time looking into the introductory lecture because uh, spending few minutes on that introductory session will help you make an informed decision on whether or not you will uh, you would want to go ahead with the series of lectures. So, I highly recommend you to consider uh, that 10 minute introductory session so that you will make uh, a decision whether or not to stick with these lecture series. Now, hoping that you have uh, done so, we will proceed with this technical lecture. So, in the introductory uh, lectures of this particular series, in the upcoming few lectures of this particular series, what we essentially want to do is we want to start off with something that forms the foundation of engineering mathematics and we will try to build on it. We won't want to get into something that is already being used in the current research setting. We want to start off with something fundamental, something basic and we will try to build on it. So that is rather the inclination or the pathway for the introductory series of lectures. Now in order to do so, we will start off by addressing one obvious question. The first obvious question that we want to address is, it has to do with materials research. We want to know how relevant, before getting into uh, spending some time in uh, materials research and particularly the mathematical techniques involved in material research, we want to know how relevant these materials researches are. Of course, as long as uh, curiosity exists, there will not be any shortage for uh, any sort of research. But since we are going to spend some time, particularly in the context of engineering, we want to spend some time in understanding the mathematical technique, this, some, for some the complicated part, the complex part of it, in relevance to that or in the context of material research, maybe it's just uh, important or it is just a little bit motivating for us to understand the relevance of materials research. So that is something that we will try to address in this first technical lecture. Now, Supposing if you are in uh, a market for uh, a new phone, supposing you want to buy a new phone, there are certain features that you look for. Even if you are uh, dead set on buying a specific phone, let's say you are a zombie like Apple fanboy, you are dead set on buying a specific phone, even then you are uh, a bit more uh, curious or you want to know uh, what this phone or what uh, this phone has to ha have offer in certain aspect. For instance, what is the screen size, what is the brightness, what is the camera specifications and so on and so forth. In the same level of these other features, one other feature that you might be interested in will be the fast charging aspect of your phone. So irrespective of what phone you have already decided to buy, you will be interested to know if this particular phone is the hour has the capacity of fast charging. Now, when you consider or when you move away from the customer facing fast charging aspect of the phone to that of uh, the technical aspect of fast charging, what you essentially observe is the charging is nothing but a sort of an electrochemical reaction. So charging is nothing but the movement of electrons when from one side to that of other side. Charging is nothing but the consequential movement of ion from one end to another end. As it is illustrated here, what we mean by fast charging is essentially there are ions that move from one side of uh, your battery to that of, so to speak, to that of the other side as it is graphically represented here. Now, if this is charging, so what we mean by discharging is, so if you plug your phone to a charger, what essentially happens is there is a movement of ions from in one particular direction. Now, instead of plugging it to a charger, if you plug it onto an headphone and if you start listening to this lecture, what essentially is happening is your phone is getting discharged. What technically you observe is the movement of ions is now getting reversed. The ions are now moving in the opposite direction. So char charging, it is moving in a one particular direction and discharging, it is moving in the another particular direction. So essentially what we call as fast charging, so what we call as charging up your phone and what we call as uh, discharging or using your phone essentially has to do with, it boils down to movement of ions and in which direction it is moving. So if you consider our starting point of going to a market and buying a phone and where we are now, particularly when it was introduced as technically looking into the charging aspect, 
we are now understanding the charging the fast charging aspect based on movement of our ions so we started off by saying we want to understand or we are considering the charging aspect of my phone that that i am about to buy and now we stand in a place where we are just considering the direction of the movement of ions in which direction it is moving it says if my phone is getting charged or discharged now this is something that i want you to hold on to let's say this is something like that of a chekhov's gun meaning this aspect of how we approach a given problem this be considered in the subsequent lecture so what we have essentially done is we started off with charging of our phone and when we talk about technically addressing or technically looking into the charging of the phone what we are now considering is just the movement of our ions now when we are technically considering it what we have ignored is what type of phone that we are using what is the capacity of its battery and even when we are talking about just the movement of ions we also did not speak much about what kind of electrodes are we talking about here all that we are considering is when we are talking about technically the operation of a battery we have ignored so many aspect and considered very few aspects so this is something that uh, this approach this way of looking into things is something that i want you to hold on to because this will be addressed in the subsequent lecture so even though this is the first lecture and we want to address some other things this is something like chakok chakov guns is nothing but uh, when you see a movie and uh, you see a gun being placed in scene 1 maybe in scene 4 or in scene 5 this gun will be used so it is something similar to it we are placing a gun now we will be using which we will be using which will be extremely insightful in the subsequent lecture so that gun is we start off by talking about uh, what is so relevant to us that is charging of charging a phone where we ended up when we are technically discussing is just the movement of ions in a particular direction now when we consider the movement of ion in a particular direction what we essentially observe is when these ions move they essentially find a place in the electrode so when we talk about ions moving they move from one electrode to that of the another electrode and they find a specific place in that electrode so this is how these ions occupy so essentially your electrode is rather invaded by a foreign body so when you are charging your phone or when your phone is getting discharged you see the movement of ions and this move, moving ions they go and capture some portion of your electrode now initially your electrode could have been a homogeneous setup it could have uh, been um, without any foreign body but once you start to charge it you have some bo foreign bodies present in them so what i mean by foreign bodies is this lithium ions that go and occupy your electrode so that is exactly what you see here so these lithium ions they go and occupy these particular cathodes now let's just say this electrode here let's let us be more uh, environmentally conscious let us rather recycle and make this electrode out of carbon let's just say carbon that comes from fly ash so fly ash is nothing but uh, a by product that comes during mining or mining of coal so what we essentially are doing is we are taking this by product this harmful by product of uh, mining coal mining and we are making a battery electrode out of it now this battery electrode is primarily comprising of carbon now when i am charging it the lithium ions are moving and occupying this carbon based electrodes so essentially when these lithium ion move and occupy this carbon based electrodes we have two distinct regions that are present in this electrode so one region that is here is the lithium rich region and the other region that is the matrix the region that primarily comprises of your electrode is carbon rich so essentially you have once you start you know, charging your phone you have allowed to lithium uh, allowed lithium to move into your electrode and now when you allowed the lithium to move in they accommodate they establish themselves and they form lithium rich region as opposed to the carbon rich region of the matrix now as we keep on charging so essentially what happens is we increase the number of lithium ions that move into this carbon based electrode 
and essentially this region keeps on increasing so the lithium region lithium rich region keeps on increasing in the matrix so we want to charge our phone charge our phone means we are allowing the lithium ions to move in a particular direction as they move they get they accommodate themselves in a specific electrode and that electrode is carbon rich electrode and since they move and accommodate this carbon rich electrode now we have two specific regions one is carbon rich matrix that is this white region here that is the carbon rich matrix and these regions that are formed as a result of accommodating the lithium ion these are the lithium rich regions so we have a single electrode and we have two distinct region now let me pose a question so there are two possibilities of having this lithium rich region distributed in the carbon rich matrix let's say there are two possibilities possibility a where as you can see there are these lithium rich region and they are spread apart and possibility b there are these lithium rich region which are rather close together they are touching one another which of these two would you prefer which of these two do you think would be energetically favorable after all this is a technical lecture so let us uh, bring in some technical terms even though the example here might be generic but still which of these two do you think will be of low energy configuration energetically favored one you have in both these cases you are considering the charging of your phone the charging means bringing in lithium ions and accommodating the lithium ions in electrode now we see there are two possible ways we have spread out lithium rich region but on the other hand in case b we have lithium rich region that are attached one another which of these two will be energetically more stable now you can pause and try to answer this question or i guess you already know the answer to this question if you are uh, kind of trying to answer this question i will uh, give you an example or one way of thinking about it this is something that uh, i gained from my uh, undergrad student he helped me see this in this way so essentially these are as we have uh, said earlier these are lithium rich region and these can be considered as foreign bodies let's assume that uh, your matrix is a homogeneous state or a kingdom and now we have these invaders these lithium rich invaders now there are two possibilities of this lithium rich in, uh, lithium rich invader to establish themselves either they can establish a continuous kingdom like here either they can establish a continuous kingdom like here or they can establish an individual satellite kingdoms or pockets of kingdoms like here which do you think will be more favored more economical or more practical either to have an individual set of kingdoms or to have a continuous set of kingdoms if you are thinking along these lines it is better to have a continuous set of kingdoms because you don't have to worry about these two boundaries here when you have a kingdom that is sharing another boundary with another kingdom the boundary is always a area of contention now when you have these satellite kingdoms when you have these kingdoms or, or these distinct kingdoms that is being established by your invaders you have to worry about all these boundaries here and when your kingdom is rather united when these invaders when they have such a continuous kingdom they don't have to worry about this particular boundary here because it will be connected with them so essentially what you are doing is in this example or in this analogy of looking into things you are reducing the area of the shared boundary you are reducing the area of the contentious boundary so when you are reducing the area of the contentious boundary you can then focus your attention on the other boundaries that are shared with the neighbor so now if you take that understanding and apply it to our system what essentially we observe is when you have reduced the interfacial area correspondingly you have reduced the interfacial energy like in case of kingdoms when there is a shared boundary it is the area of contention in material systems when you have two different regions of two different compositions like in this case we have this region that is that is lithium rich and this this region that is carbon rich 
so these are two different regions that two significantly distinct chemical composition so there exists a boundary and that interfacial in area is rather an high energy region you have an interfacial region that separate two regions of two significantly different composition and this region that separates or this section or this boundary that separates the lithium rich region from that of the carbon rich region is a high energy region so now when you reduce when it is possible for us to reduce the area of this interface the perimeter of this interface what essentially then we are doing is we are reducing the energy of your system to put it uh, to bring it all together if you have these distinct pockets of this region you will have a greater interfacial area and greater the interfacial area higher will be the energy of your system because you need more area to separate your lithium rich region to that of the carbon rich region on the other hand if your lithium rich regions are united like this or fused in like this what essentially you would have is you will have a reduced rather amount of the interfacial area so that means a minimization of the interfacial energy so basically then what you will have is an energetically more preferable an energetically more preferable distribution of your lithium rich region so we started off by considering the charging of our batteries and we saw that charging is nothing but movement of ions and when we considered it we ignored several aspect of charging we focus just on movement of the ions and when we consider the movement of the ions the ions should move and occupy some sp space in the electrodes and uh, there are different ways these ions can move and occupy the space or establish themselves one they can do it continuously or they can form a distinct pockets and we now understand that when they form distinct pockets like in case a it is it demands more energy for to form these pockets on the other hand if they form a continuous region then the amount of interfacial area is reduced thereby the overall energy of the system gets reduced so it means b is rather more energetically favored than that of a so now what essentially we have seen is we have seen that moving and accommodating the lithium ion is the charging the movement of ions and its accommodation in the electrode is what we refer to as charging and now we have understood what is an energetically preferred way of this distribution of these regions so when we say lithium ion and goes and gets accommodated itself in electrode we now understand in which way it will get accommodated itself in the electrode now what we will do in the next section of this lecture is we will try to bring in some mathematics and we will see if we are able to rather describe the rate of charging or this fast charging concepts using certain mathematical equations right we saw something that we use regularly that is charging of our phones we boiled it down or we narrowed it down to certain aspects of uh, the material changes that is involved in uh, charging and now we also have looked into how things look within an electrode during this charging process how things are energetically favored how the distribution of uh, these ions are energetically favored in an electrode and finally what we will try to do in the next lecture is bring in some mathematics and see if it helps us gain a bit more understanding of what we have seen thus far so we will stop here and we will uh, take it up in the next section of this lecture